Hello, welcome to Complete Chiropractic Healthcare on the website of Dr. Greg Arnold, www.pitchingdoc.com. Today we're going to be discussing my October 8th, 2015 newsletter called The Scars of Tommy John Surgery. And if you look under the date, there's a hyperlink for PDF that usually pulls up a document that's usually a little bit easier to read. So uh, this newsletter is based on an article in the October 6th the, uh, issue of the, of the New York Times. And if you look at it, it's right here. It's called the scars of the game and it pretty much a pictorial uh, documentary of uh, pitchers and position players in the major leagues who have had uh, Tommy John surgery and their story so it's a very powerful article has a lot of really good lessons um, and while they did talk about two position players who have had Tommy John surgery, uh, Carl Crawford and uh, Matt Holliday, uh, there were two pitchers who were interviewed who said things that were very profound uh, that we're going to highlight today. The first um, is from Jacob deGrom. And Jacob deGrom, um, he was named uh, National League Rookie of the Year in uh, 2014. And then he went ahead and he was elected to the uh, All-Star Game in 2015. Needed just 10 pitches and he struck out uh, the side in the inning uh, that he worked. Uh, but before all that happened, he actually had Tommy John surgery uh, when he was in the minor leagues. Uh, now, it wasn't until after his surgery that he started to learn that he needed to become a pitcher instead of the thrower. So being in the Mets um, system, he was able to talk with uh, Johan Santana, who has... Uh, one of the best change-ups uh, in the game. So uh, there was a good, uh, good quote he talked about when he met Johan Santana, uh, but he talks about how Johan, um, he, the greatness of Johan actually came when he learned how to throw uh, a better change-up. Now the change-up is a pitch uh, that I stress nearly as much as having a good fastball. And there have been... It seems like every every year there's a great article on the changeup, and I've written about it every year since the year 2012, um, and I just wrote about the changeup in uh, May of 2015, and you can go ahead uh, to this part of my website and you can watch a video on the article uh, that is about the changeup uh, from 2015. So, um, it, when... Learning about the changeup, if you want to actually get more in depth into uh, how to hold the changeup, um, people te teach the circle change, but they teach an incorrect grip. Um, I teach the circle change with a very specific type of grip um, that has actually yielded really uh, excellent results. Uh, and so I have a presentation in my, my baseball video library, and if you go to my website, you can click on this baseball video library um, and it pulls up this page, and here you can watch a one-minute video um, that talks about what's in the, the video library. We answer questions about throwing drills and long toss, um, conditioning, and one of the presentations is about the changeup, including how to uh, hold the changeup, but then also uh, when do you throw the changeup uh, during the at-bat. And unfortunately, uh, most coaches teach uh, the exact opposite time in an at bat to actually throw uh, the changeup. So, going back to the interview in the paper, when Degrom was asked what may have caused his injury, uh, he talked about um, overthrowing. Um, talking about the lack of pitch counts in one game. He threw 130 pitches. But the most profound thing he said was about not having a routine. Uh, he would play infield after he pitched. He's sometimes the outfield. Uh, he never really took a break or had a, uh, a routine to take care of his arm. And this is one of the biggest obstacles that I run into with uh, my pitching students in regards to their coaches where the kids are never given adequate notice uh, on when they're supposed to pitch. So I, I wrote a newsletter about this, about the best thing a coach can do uh, for his pitchers, which you can see here um, from August 5th, 2015. And the most important thing a coach can do is give uh, about six to seven days 
uh, of notice so that a pitcher can go ahead and get into his routine. Well, what does that mean with the routine? Uh, the routine includes running, uh, conditioning, weighted jump rope, medicine ball training, uh, getting proper long toss in, doing a good bullpen session. And when a pitcher is able to do all these things between starts, they wind up having a much better start and keeping their arms uh, much healthier. Uh, now, the second pitcher who was highlighted was John Smoltz, Hall of Fame pitcher for the, uh, the Atlanta Braves. And uh, he hit the nail on the head when asked, why is this injury, Tommy John uh, injury, so common now in the major leagues? And, and this is a view that is... Uh, being uh, really agreed upon among the people at the top is that uh, the damage that we see in the major league pitchers and why all these injuries are happening when they get to the major leagues or even the minor leagues is because of the, of the abuse that is being done to them when they're teenagers. Um, a lot of coaches and kids like to have players and kids who throw hard at a young age, but that's actually a risk factor for injury. And what John said, which is exactly right, if you're young and you throw too hard, you're taxing a ligament, meaning the elbow ligament, and the tendons in the elbow, uh, around the elbow muscles, that just don't have the opportunity to bear it, meaning they can't handle the stress. We're throwing harder than we ever have, we're stronger, we're working out more, but we're not smarter. And to me, that was probably one of the most important quotes uh, from the entire article. And this actually was uh, echoed by um, Peter Gammons um, when he was interviewed on a New York sports radio station back uh, in March of 2014, and I was just lucky enough to be able to hear it in passing. And the quote that he talked about was, he said, all these guys with Tommy John surgery coming off a year of 40% of starting pitches in the major leagues are on the disabled list. I think, it all, I think it starts with these traveling teams when they're 15 years old. They're going to showcases and over-pitching and then college where their college coaches abuse them. A lot of injuries you see in the major leagues come from what they did between the ages of 12 and 21. And this is why when I'm working with my uh, my pitching students, um, I'm, a, I'm a big uh, opponent of fall ball. I, I try to consistently urge the kids to, uh, to get away from fall ball, to stop... Um, uh, to stop playing, to focus on getting stronger. Um, so when we talk about in-season conditioning, what you really need to be doing between pitching starts and off-season conditioning, your throwing timelines, getting into the weight room, uh, this is all available in uh, the baseball video library. If you look over on the side, you have all these topics over here from long toss to the weight room, conditioning programs, nutrition, throwing drills. So these are all questions that I've been asked uh, by students and coaches, so I went ahead and built this video library. So if you want to subscribe to the library, you just click on the link and it'll take you to here. So uh, this was a tremendously important article uh, in the New York Times, and I was very glad I was lucky enough to, to come across it. So I hope everything that we talked about made sense. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me, um, pitchingdoc at msn.com. You can give me a call at the number listed here, or you can go to my website at www.pitchingdoc.com. Thank you.